All right, you are listening to The Richard Brown Show here on WCOM LP, Chapel Hill and Carborough, 103.5 FM. I am Richard Brown, and I want to thank you for joining me today. I want to take a second and let you know about a few things that's going on. Number one, uh, if you could, please stop by WCOM WCOMFM.org. Lots of information there about the station, about the radio station, what you're doing, and uh, would like for you to be a part. Number two, I want to tell you a little bit about the show, why I'm here and what I'm doing. This show was here to provide a space. I've talked about it in the standpoint of expanding space, but I also want to talk about it as a nurturing space. Uh, I think about specifically the black church and the choir. There are a whole lot of folks who are in the black church, particularly the choir, that not necessarily great singers, but yet still there is this, in my mind, most of the churches that I've been in have been a place where you still can be a voice. And this is this space. And when I think about this space, i.e. the Richard Brown Show, that's it. You know, let's be clear. I'm not necessarily a great speaker, but the point is it's a space that's nurturing, not just to me, but to all of my guests, to all of the people who it touches, to you who are the watch, who, who watches. So number one, I want to let you know what I'm, what I'm doing and to invite you to be a part. So today what we're going to do is talk about an excellent conference and of course what uh, this excellent scholar is working on and I encourage you to come out to the, uh, the conference that's coming up in uh, a little less than a month. And uh, let me go ahead and introduce my guest and uh, get the conversation started. Dr. Jackson, thank you so much. It is an honor for you to be on the show. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. All right, if you could, uh, you run the Institute over at Chapel Hill. If you talk a little about the Institute, and please take as much time as you need to talk about your own research. It's, uh, I, I, I've heard about it and know how great it is, and so <laughs> just want you to take as much time as you need to talk about your own passion. Well. Thank you so much, and first of all, let me thank you for inviting me to your show. I appreciate the opportunity to have have a, a space to talk, you know, uh, and I understand and agree completely with the, the healing metaphor that uh, we have to express our own thoughts, our own ideas. We have to periodically regroup and remember what it, what, what it was we we're about and what it was we're, we're planning on doing, you know. Um, and I appreciate that you're creating that kind of opportunity here through your program. Um, I came to uh, Chapel Hill um, just a little over a year ago, in July 1, uh, 2009, and I, I came in as a professor of biological anthropology and the uh, director of the Institute of African American Research. And what's, what was very interesting for me about the Institute was its tremendous potential to address issues of importance for African American peoples. And um, it has a 15 year legacy of doing just that. But I was bringing to it a commitment to all that had been done, plus the addition of adding a scientific dimension to the research. Because in fact, there, there are very few fields that do not impact on African Americans. And so we need to, to understand, you know, what do those other fields of study outside of the traditional humanities and, and social sciences, how, what else do we need to know about ourselves so that we can tell our story completely and holistically? So I'm, I'm very, um, I have a very integrated, interdisciplinary perspective, and we have been, been trying to foster that kind of integrated approach in the programs that we've done uh, during this year. And again, this builds on a, a legacy of, of integrated programs um, that are, we would say, cross-disciplinary, uh, that address many different themes of interest to peoples of African descent and help to document the, the many different African-American experiences in North America, but also throughout the transatlantic African diaspora. Let me. Let me get you to talk about specifically your research, because as we talked about before we actually got on, the, on, on air, mm -hmm. um, I believe that this space is about helping people to get context. And specifically for African Americans, um, I just um, 
finished Derek Bell's book, uh, and, and We Are Not Saved. Yeah. And there's one of the chronicles talks about how the, the slavery chronicles and this this juncture because we are missing so much of our history. Yeah. And part of your work, as I understand it, is to try to give us some of that the the awesome gift and the resource of some of that history. So could you please please talk about that? <laughs> okay, I will. Thank you. Uh, you know, most scientists are pretty shy to talk about their own research because it's so close, and also it's always a work in progress. Mm -hmm. As long as that scientist is alive. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, I was have been long been interested in African American diversity. I'm interested in human diversity, but you understand that humanity has spent most of our time in Africa. So for the bulk of our, our history as a species, hom a homo sapiens, its history, we, to be African was to be human. And then only within the last, say, 50,000 years have we seen modern humans being able to survive outside of Africa. And so all of the rest of human diversity is actually, genetically, it's a subset of African diversity. We, too, are linked to Africa because of um, our uh, uh, recent ancestry. Uh, the bulk of our ancestors came from Africa. I'm an African American. And uh, I think that um, one of the things that was quite interesting to me is to look at the tremendous diversity that exists among African Americans. And this diversity is often overlooked in the biomedical and, and public health and epidemiological literatures where uh, black people or African people or peoples of African descent are dealt with as if they were a monolith. But what we know is that, that Africans, if Africa is the homeland of humanity, if it's the place where our, all of our ancestors spent the greatest amount of time, that that's where we're going to see the greatest diversity. And then some of that diversity was, in a sense, siphoned off during the tragic of Maafa or the transatlantic slave trade or trade in enslaved persons of African descent. And so uh, documenting the regional patterns of African American diversity, uh, first at a biological level, and then looking at how that diversity shows up culturally, and how the, the genes and the environment interact so that you get local groupings of African Americans that, that have maybe slightly different patterns of disease or slightly different cuisines or slightly different ways of speaking English. This is all very fascinating to me. And um, so my research actually over the last 15 years has been trying to document this diversity and develop models that could aid in uh, research on peoples of African descent. Again, uh, the past models have overemphasized black-white comparisons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as if those were the most important comparison. And, uh, and they've also um, uh, dealt with African Americans as a monolith. And so they've tried to find um, solutions that would just work for all African Americans. Have you focused on a specific geographical area as it relates to the United States, or has it been you've been able to pull sampling from you know, across the country? Well, we've, I focused, I was particularly interested in the major staging areas where Africans were first brought to, to what became the United States. Right. And there were, were three major staging areas. I mean, you, we understand that slavery was, was throughout the East Coast and then into the South. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for some time I worked on the African burial ground in New York and it was surprising to many people that, oh, there was slavery in New York? And said, yes, mm -hmm. in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. So it wasn't just a Southern thing. But we've looked at particularly the Chesapeake Bay area. Mm -hmm. We've looked at the Carolina Coast region and we looked at the Mississippi Delta region. And when you say the Carolina Coast, you mean Wilmington? Uh, we mean, well, it's actually lowland uh, Carolinas. So not just Wilmington, but actually moving inward. So what is now Northeast Carolina, Southeast Carolina, then down into, into South Carolina, uh, and then uh, into Georgia, all the way down to uh, Jacksonville, Florida, 